Support for Just Seen It comes from Warner Archive Instant. Streaming hard to find movies and TV shows direct from the studio at WarnerArchiveInstant.com. We chat with cinematographer Bob Yeoman about his collaborations with directors Wes Anderson and Paul Feig and his latest film, The Heat. Hi, I'm Brenna. Hi, I'm Bob. And I'm Sean. Today we're honored to have with us Mr. Bob Yeoman, cinematographer on such films as The Heat, Bridesmaids, and Moonrise Kingdom, among others. Welcome, Bob. Thank you. You and Wes Anderson have worked together a lot over the years, and now you're starting to work more with Paul Feig. How does the prep on the Wes Anderson films differ from the prep on the Paul Feig films? Wes's prep tends to start months in advance. He lives in Paris, I live in Los Angeles. After I get the script, he starts sending me pictures, references, and we have a long collaboration e by email about the look of the film, things he's thinking about. Then uh, when I get there, we do a very extensive scouting with Wes. We started on Moonrise Kingdom, we had a 16-millimeter camera, we shot the film in 16, and we would actually pre-shoot certain scenes where we'd take our producers, our first AD, myself, the production designer, and we would go to a location and actually shoot as if the actors were there, just so Wes could kind of go back and look at it later and refine it. So we did that quite a bit on uh, Moonrise Kingdom, we also did it on Grand Budapest Hotel. Paul, on the other hand, it's a less of an extensive prep. We do go to locations, we do talk. It's a little looser. A lot of the way Paul's films are shot, because they're comedies, there are a lot of improv, we do two cameras. Wes is more specific on how he likes to shoot things. So. Paul's more winging it a little bit? Yeah, I mean, it, it, so much, he likes to do a lot of improv with the actors, and, and it's a different style of shooting where Wes is much more specific. It's one camera. Is that becoming more and more common in the industry to shoot things multi-camera? Yeah, and particularly in comedies, I find more and more people want to use more than one camera, two cameras, sometimes three cameras. And I think with the schedules being tighter, budgets being tighter, people want to move faster, and you get more coverage of people that way, quicker, and it's all done in one main take. So uh, I, th I think there's a trend towards that for sure. So you've been a DP since the early 1980s, if yes. I'm not mistaken. Yes. Was there a really hard moment that you had that oh. you regret or you wish you could have done um, differently? The, probably the most stressful one I ever had was my first movie. I uh, took over for Robbie Mueller on To Live and Die in L.A. And uh, it was Billy Friedkin directing. He was a pretty intense director. And so we went to do the shot. And it was a pretty elaborate shot. It was a dolly shot with crane moves and everything. It was Willem Dafoe and Dean Stockwell. And this was back when everything was filmed and there was no video assist. And so the operator really was the only one who saw the shot. So we did one take and Billy said, uh, so did you get it? And I said, yeah, I mean, there was a little bit of a bump in the dime move, but it was good. And Billy said, you know, we're not going for Academy Awards here. That's a wrap. One take, that's it. <laughs> did you get to keep any of the counterfeit money? Um, <laughs> well, I, uh, officially, no. <laughs> um, we, I do have a letter from the, uh, is it the Secret Service, I think, or the really? FBI, because we did, I actually shot that sequence where they're making the counterfeit money. That was done as a second unit in a little warehouse, and we hired a real counterfeiter. If you remember in the film, they, we showed the whole process of how to make fake money, and um uh, so a lot of people in the film did keep the money, and one of the guys had put it in his drawer, and his son had gone and taken the money out and spent it. And so there was fake money being circulated uh, in the streets of L.A., which the people in the federal government don't take lightly. <laughs> no. So we all got letters uh, saying, if you have any fake money, please turn it in. This is illegal. So officially, no, I don't. <laughs> yes. So were there any DPs or films that really inspired you to become a cinematographer? Well, the first movie that I really was inspired by was A Clockwork Orange, and I saw it uh, many when it came out many years ago. And when I came out of that film, I was just like, I, I really, I don't know what I can do or how to get involved in this, but I really want to work on movies. And, um, you know, the cinematographers that I, you know, inspire me, there's so many, but to name a few, Vittorio Storaro with The Conformist, if you haven't seen that, it's an amazing movie. Gordon Willis with The Godfather, Freddie Young, Lawrence of Arabia, classic. 
Conrad Hall, Fat City, and uh, certainly Vilmo Sigmund. I remember seeing McCabe and Mrs. Miller. I probably saw it in the theater like 25 times. I love that movie so much. So in the early 1980s, film was the norm, 35 millimeter, and now we've pretty much graduated almost exclusively to digital. Do you have a preference between the two or an opinion on how we're shifting? Well, I came up with film. I've always been a film person, and all of my movies have been film. Moonrise Kingdom was actually 16 millimeter, which uh, no one shoots anymore. And I did another movie, Squid and the Whale, several years ago, 16, and I love the 16 millimeter and the quality of it. I find that certainly in low light situations, night exteriors, it really can capture a lot more than a film camera probably could. On the day exteriors, I'm not so sure. You know, if something's very bright and hot, it kind of tends to burn out and get very kind of video-y. But the digital cameras are certainly coming, you know, every year they're improving, they're improving, and, and, you know, I think it's only a matter of time. Thank you very much for coming. My pleasure. And we're looking forward to Grand Budapest Hotel coming out in late fall. Cheers. 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 Shooting on film. There you go. I am Bob. <laughs> Support for Just Seen It comes from Warner Archive Instant. Streaming hard to find movies and TV shows direct from the studio at WarnerArchiveInstant.com.